Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church. And Pastor Nanette Christopherson and I are, are trying to provide brief introductions to upcoming Bible readings assigned to the upcoming Sunday. And so today I want us to look at the Gospel reading assigned for January 24th, 2021. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Uh, marks the primary gospel for this uh, lectionary uh, season of, 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 of season B, year B. And so uh, let's take a look at that. Beginning in verse 14. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news, the gospel of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. It's at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of Mark is the briefest account of the life and ministry of Jesus. Mark does not want to waste any time, and throughout his writing, we sense the urgency of telling the story, of moving Jesus to get along, to get Jesus to the culmination of his mission, and to Mark, that culmination is the cross. For Mark, the crucifixion of Jesus is the event which inaugurates the full access to the reign of God in the world and in our lives. God's love becomes fully revealed, and it is that love which will change hearts and minds away from bondage to sin and fear to freedom and hope. We start with a transition point. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Then immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness to experience the temptations and testing that confront all humans regarding trusting and serving God or trusting and serving oneself and pursuing the temporal things of this world. Jesus comes with a message and an invitation. The message now is the time when the kingdom reign rule of God is near or at hand. The invitation is driven by the urgency. Repent. Turn away from the things that are not of God. Turn back to God and believe or trust that in responding or following the one bringing the message you will receive and experience good news. So some questions. When have you experienced a sense of urgency that caused you to pivot, turn in a different direction, or change your mind and agenda, uh, change your agenda and mind? When have you discovered that in turning back to God, you have to be willing to let go of relationships and things that get in the way of trusting God? In our reading, we now have Jesus moving from his hometown of Nazareth to Galilee, which will be home base to his three-year ministry. Mark records that John the Baptist has been arrested. The word, the word used here is more accurately translated as handed over, and there's a parallel between John being handed over, leading to his death, and Jesus eventually being arrested or handed over to his death. John became problematic for King Herod as he criticized the legitimacy of his marriage. Herod's wife Herodias was, the fir was first the wife of Herod's brother Philip. According to Jewish law, a woman could not initiate or petition for divorce. Only men were allowed. Herodias may have used Roman law, which allowed women to divorce husbands, but in the eyes of Jewish law, it was invalid. So Herodias would be committing adultery. What we do know is that John the Baptist was a problem for the king and his wife. And as is typical and seen even today, those in power who think they have the most to lose will use that power to silence their critics. A little background on Galilee. When Herod Antipas took over Galilee in Jesus' time, it was a rural region on Judea's margins. Larger towns such as Bethsaida, a fishing center on the Sea of Galilee, could hold as many as 2,000 to 3,000 people. However, most people lived in small villages such as Nazareth, the home of Joseph and Mary, and Capernaum, the village where Jesus' ministry was centered. The populations of these hamlets rarely rose above 400 people, according to archaeologist Jonathan L. Reed. Herod Antipas transformed sleepy Galilee 
by building bustling urban centers of government, commerce, and recreation. The crown jewels of this building program were Tiberius and Sephoris, known today as Zaporia. Tiberius, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, was a lakeside resort that Antipas built to honor his patron, Tiberius, who succeeded Caesar Augustus in AD 14. Sephoris, however, was an urban renewal project. The city had been a regional center before, but it was destroyed by order of Quintil uh, Quintilius Varsus, the Roman governor of Syria, when descendants, dissidents, opposed, um, dissidents opposed to Antipas seized the palace and terrorized the region. Herod Antipas had enough vision to see that the city could be restored and expanded, giving him another urban center for Galilee. Migrant laborers, construction workers, traders using the inland trade route of the Jordan River Valley, domestic servants, fishermen, farmers, soldiers, and government workers from various backgrounds placed Jesus clearly in the mix between Jews and Gentiles. Verse 16, as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. This little phrase of turning followers of Jesus into those who fish for people has been used for centuries to affirm the outreach call of Jesus to those who don't know him. As any commercial fisherman or woman knows, when you cast your nets, your livelihood depends on the catching of fish. And those fish will end up dead and on some dinner plate somewhere. There may be an allusion to what the real call of Jesus is. That everything we have from daily breath to daily bread or fish are gifts from God. And the call to follow is a call to surrender all that has been given for the sake of being used to reveal the reign kingdom of God for others. We also need to be careful when applying this passage and making those we seek to share the love of Jesus with feeling as if they've been baited or a target for which we might gain some credit. I think an important part of this little passage is that in following Jesus, Jesus will show and apprentice them into knowing how to fish for people in a way that leads to life and transformation. But we need to understand that most fish don't want to be caught because it usually involves drastic change. Verse 18. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Immediately is a popular word in the gospel according to Mark. There's an urgency to getting the word out about the reign or kingdom of God being near or at hand. Mark really believes that what Jesus reveals and brings to all is good news. Jesus, through his mission, his death and resurrection, will bring once and for all a means to end all that separates us from God and move us from living without hope or burdened by fear and set us free to be beloved children of God, experiencing human community the way God intended we see the next set of brothers, James and John, hearing the same invitation from Jesus. It appears their family business is a little larger operation. As Mark notes, they left their father Zebedee and the hired men to finish tending the nets. What always catches my attention is that there's no reaction or account of Zebedee either blessing or cursing his boys, simply jumping ship and leaving others to do their work. I've heard this explained that in Jesus' time, one of the highest honors a parent could receive is to know that their son had been chosen to be a student of a noted rabbi. We don't know how identified as a rabbi Jesus was at this moment in the mission. We don't know if Peter and Andrew, James and John simply did not make the cut when other rabbis passed through town. 
But what we do know from this little passage is that those two sets of brothers leave their livelihood, the family business, and don't seem to face resistance from anyone. Some questions. When have, when have you had the experience of dropping everything you are doing to respond to an invitation request or a call? How do you think you might respond if Jesus showed up in the course of an ordinary day of activities and said, follow me? If you were Zebedee in the boat that day, how might you have reacted? Finally, what nets are keeping you from fully following Jesus? During this lectionary cycle with Mark being our primary Sunday gospel source, we will continue to listen and learn about what the reign or kingdom of God is like. We'll hear over and over again the sense of urgency through the use of the word immediately. We will discover that even though Jesus has a circle of disciples, he is called to learn from him. Throughout this gospel account, they just don't ever fully understand who he is and how God's reign and kingdom are different from the world in which they find themselves. In many ways, they're no different than 21st century disciples of Jesus. I hope you'll enjoy this lesson and prepare your hearts to worship God this week as we are on this grand adventure of following Jesus of being a student, a disciple of the one we call Lord and Savior. Take care. God bless.